Hi, we're outside reading um, one of my favorite books, Front Desk by Kelly Yang. And um, this was the Global Read Aloud a few years ago, maybe two years ago. And we're going to read chapter 65. Chapter 65. No, I said, shaking my head firmly. Just this once, Dad said. We're so close. Dad, you saw what happened to Uncle Ming. The memory of his black eye and the bruises on his neck where the lone sharks grabbed him ripped through me. I know, but this is different. You said it yourself. This is a huge opportunity. I looked up at my dad. I had never seen him so much with so much determination and hope in his eyes. We're this close, my dad said, it, holding up his fingers. My mother put her hand over mine. Just this once, she repeated. We'll pay them right back just this once. Hour after terrifying hour, I sat and waited at the front desk. The loan sharks were coming. I pictured hammerheads swimming up to the front desk, glaring at us from the sides of their heads. They pulled into the motel in a black Cadillac DeVille. Three big Chinese guys stepped out. They were wearing leather jackets. One of them had a tattoo of the word Ren, R-E-N, in Chinese on his neck which means to suffer. Another had a big tear in his ear, tear in his ear, like someone had ripped out his earring. And the third, the boss of the group, had oily skin and long stringy hair, which he wore in a ponytail. There was a great big bulge in his jacket and I swallowed hard as they stepped through the bulletproof glass door. You understand, for an amount this large, we're going to need some collateral, the oily boss of the loan shark said to my dad. The three of them sat on the small sofa in our living room. With a trembling hand, my mom poured them the last of our jasmine tea. Yes, my dad said, that makes sense. What do you need? Passport ID, he said. I felt myself cold, cold. But Uncle Zhang, I reminded my dad. My dad put a finger over his mouth. Not now. It'll be returned to you, of course, when you pay us back, the oily boss said. His voice lingered. But if you don't pay us back the $50,000 plus another 20000 on top, well then, the boss, the boss glanced at his associates. His associates stretched out their hand and cracked their knuckles. With every crack, fear jolted down my spine. And that's the end of chapter 65. I'm going to read another one, chapter 66. It was decided that the next afternoon the loan sharks would come back with the $50,000 and my parents would hand over our passports and IDs. I walked to school with nails in my stomach. It was the last day of school. As we all cleaned out our desk and counted down to the last hour, Jason walked up to me. Hey, he said. His, in his hand, he was holding a pencil. It was my sparkly green pencil. Been meaning to give this back to you, he said, handing the pencil to me. I looked down at the pencil in my hands. I'd expected it to be super short and beat up by now. I had had big visions of Jason's dog chewing on it. Jason stabbing things at home with it, wearing it down to a nub. But it was exactly the same length as before as I, and as beautiful, as sparkly as ever. Thank you, I said. This means a lot to me. I hugged my pencil in my hands. I'm sure you'll write great things with it, he added. I looked up at him in surprise. Like the piece you wrote about coming to America. A smile stretched across my face. Thanks, I said. Jason looked down at the floor. I'm sorry I made your year so miserable, he said softly. It's okay, I said. I'm sorry too, for, you know. I could see in his eyes I did not need to remind him about the time in the auditorium. He probably remembered every day. Here, I have something for you too, I said. I reached deep into my backpack and pulled out the thank you letter that I had been meaning to give to him. I'd been carrying it around in my backpack for months. Jason looked down at the note, surprised. He smiled as he read my words. As I turned to leave, Jason reached out and touched my arm. What? I asked. He's bluffing. There's no other buyer. It's just you guys. He'll take a lot less for the motel. I stared at Jason. His brown eyes blazed with courage, but it was his kindness that blew me away. 
When the school bell rang, I ran. Do you think Mia will make it in time? We're going to read chapter 67 in the next video, so stay tuned.